Jeff Silvera. How's it going, Jeff? Pretty good. Pretty nice good. Day. Nice. You know what? It's kind of warming up. You know, and there's uh, the sun comes out once in a while here in San Francisco. Yeah, it does. But Jeff, how many years you been on staff here at San Francisco State? This will be my third year here at San Francisco State. Okay, and where are you from? Uh, from San Jose, California, originally. The South right Bay. There. Yeah. About 45 minutes down south. Okay, you guys in, in California, you guys are having kind of some unique, bad problems with with wrestling, and uh, what what you know, what are you trying to, to do to, to try and keep wrestling around here in California? Well, I know myself and some others have uh, been contacting uh, numerous ads from NAI schools and Division two private schools, emailing them, telling them about how many 27,000 high school wrestlers here in California looking for a place to compete. Uh, I've had a meeting with uh, Concordia University last summer and they're interested in starting a men's and women's team in the next few years. But sometimes these schools need some encouragement and they need to see the numbers and they need to see where they can make uh, a profit from adding wrestling. And they can do that. You know, you guys have tw a 26 man roster here right. and I think 2.0 scholarships and, and that, that, that brings money into the school when you have that many student athletes that are paying to go to school. But that could also be beneficial to the NAIA schools, adding the sport, gender equity as well. They can pick up women's as well, correct? Oh, correct. You, you had 35 guys and then another 20 females and some of these NAIA schools are 25,000 uh, tuition. That's a lot of money you're picking up right there. Picking about picking up about an extra 600 grand in just tuition alone after cost of coaches and running the team. I mean, you're picking up some major cash, and that's and it's a trend across the country. Is a lot of people have seen any high schools are adding wrestling, and here in California, California Baptist added a few years ago, Menlo, and some of some other schools are interested. So hopefully, in the next few years, we see a few NAI schools or even Division two schools that are private add wrestling. When you look at you know the problem with what's going on in, in California with Davis, whether it be Davis, whether it be um, Bullerton dropping, when you guys see problems like that, it kind of squeezes the kids to you guys at that point. Um, is that is that a good thing or a bad thing for wrestling? I don't think it's a good thing. I mean, even though we get some pretty good kids, you know, you want to see opportunities. You want to see kids have a chance to compete. Um, Anytime you take away opportunities, it's not it's not a good thing. Even if we're getting some of the little bit better kids than what we're uh, used to getting, uh, I just think it's important for California to maintain a set number of schools. Uh, you're, we've lost JCs over the last few years, three D1 schools in the last six years, and those opportunities being taken away, it's just not good for the sport. All right, what do you do besides coach wrestling here? I uh, full time. Uh, instructional assistant with Hillsdale High School in San Mateo. I work with special ed, so that's that's my full-time job. But this is a another job that feels like a full-time job, but I love every every minute of it. What's the unique challenge, I guess, to recruiting here at San Francisco State? Recruiting here at San Francisco State, it's it's sometimes you get uh, stonewalled when some of these kids who think they're D1 kids, um, they think D2 is less. They don't understand that our schedule is pretty much a D1 schedule. We go to Vegas, we've gone to Midlands in the past, we compete against the other D1 schools in California, compete against Wyoming last year. We see we see a lot of tough Division I competition. Uh, you know, we have kids with losing records who go in and become Division II All-Americans because they face that tough schedule. We had a kid last year, Gene Choi, 17 and 18, D2 All-American. People thought, oh, he has a losing record, but they don't understand that he's lost the 9, 10 Division One guys. Okay, and then you guys at Naveed actually beat, you know, he beat Boise State's starter. He's a two-time All-American, been fifth twice at 33 and 41. You got a guy like that who's, you know, a fifth placer in the state of California. You guys are going to get those fifth place guys, if eighth place guys, you know, seventh place guys. But people don't understand the state of California is only one division. Does that help the state of California as, as deep as it is? Oh, yeah, it, it totally helps. It's, um, you know... We, we see guys who, uh, like our Isaiah Jimenez, are 165 pounder, eighth in the state. People mistake him as, oh, he just barely plays the state. Oh, he's a, he's a great wrestler. He, uh, he's beaten state champions when he was high school from other states, multiple state champions from other states. And then he comes in here and he has a winning record last year, beat D1 guys, and uh, it's just, he's just getting better. So it's it, that, deep, that deep weight classes in California, you place in the state, you're a great wrestler. You qualify for a state, you're a pretty darn good wrestler. And it's a 40-man bracket. It's a 40-man bracket without brackets here in California. Oh, man, that's pretty tough. Are right, you got anything else for me? 
Uh, thanks for coming here. Appreciate having you here.